Thank you, Joy. Jerry Lee Lewis always liked to say that nobody follows the killer. Listen, I don't know how anybody can follow Joy, but I'm going to try. My remarks here today will touch first on legislative and political activity that are relevant to our industry, and then toward the end, I'm going to talk about our new grassroots program and why it is absolutely vital for our members to get involved. So first, let's talk about legislation. In 2017, the SLA had a tremendous victory when the state of California enacted Assembly Bill 1641. The legislation was the first bill the SLA has had enacted since AB 315 in 2010, which conformed regulation of our industry to the new federal Dodd-Frank legislation enacted during the Obama administration. AB 1641, which passed both chambers of the legislature unanimously, gives the Department of Insurance greater flexibility in adding new innovative products, such as cyber, to the export list. And that will make surplus line brokers' jobs simpler. It also ensures that California surplus lines professionals who are licensed by the new National Association of Registered Agents and Brokers, NARAB, will be deemed SLA members automatically in the same manner that California surplus lines licensees are. Now, the successful enactment of AB 1641 did not take place in a vacuum. Before we even conceived of this legislation, Ben and I had been laying the groundwork, meeting key legislators, regulators, government staffers, and admitted market colleagues in Sacramento, understanding full well there would come a time when we would need these relationships, and it's far better to have these relationships in place before you need them than after you need them. After introducing ourselves to the staff of the Assembly Insurance Committee last spring, we were given the opportunity to have our bill sponsored by the committee chair, Assemblyman Tom Daly of Anaheim, whom we had also, as it happens, met and briefed about our industry a few months earlier. Now, when your bill is being sponsored by the chair of the committee, your prospects are pretty good. We then coordinated with the Department of Insurance and the admitted market trades, such as uh, AIA, PCI, and PIF, where we had also built relationships to ensure that our bill did not create any issues for them. The CDI or any of the admitted trades, if they wanted to, could have really caused some trouble for our bill. So the fact that we worked with them and made sure they were comfortable was also pivotal in ensuring this bill would be enacted. The work we did on the front end, meeting all of these organizations, all of these people up front before we ever needed anything, enabled us to succeed on the back end. Now I do have an update to add here. I understand the Department of Insurance and a slight break with past tradition. We'll send out a pre-hearing request for ideas about which coverage is to add to the export list the next time there is a hearing. Until now, the department has only sent out official notice of the hearing without soliciting suggestions. The intent is to give more notice to the industry, and this is a very positive development, and we thank the CDI for it. This year, we do not have any bills of our own to offer at this particular moment, but we are watching two key issues in 2018, one of which is on the federal level, one of which is on the state level. On the federal level, the U.S. House of Representatives in November passed H.R. 2874, which includes provisions to spur private flood and explicitly declares surplus lines carriers eligible to provide that private flood coverage. Surplus line coverage was included in the legislation due to the efforts of the SLA and WSIA. An outreach by Ben to uh, California Congresswoman Maxine Waters, the ranking Democratic member on the House Financial Services Committee, was crucial to overcoming Democratic resistance on this point. The Senate has not taken this bill up at this time, and the status of all legislation in Washington is in flux right now due to the fact that Republicans and Democrats can't agree on what time of day it is, whether the sky is blue, or wh whether water is wet. We're probably not going to see any change to that anytime soon, but renewal of the National Flood Insurance Program uh, has been included in a series of continuing resolutions that Congress keeps using to kick the can down the road until they can get their house in order, which might happen sometime around the time maybe our grandchildren are on retirement. <laughs> Moving from uh, Washington to the state level, in response to admitted insurers continuing to cancel or non-renew policies in wildfire-prone areas, at least 12 bills have been introduced in Sacramento. 
I am going to briefly mention three that may be of interest to you. Senate Bill 824, offered by Insurance Commissioner candidate Ricardo Lara, would prevent insurance companies from dropping or non-renewing policies following a wildfire. It also would require the CDI to approve the reduction of policy volume in high-risk fire areas. Senate Bill 894, offered by former Insurance Committee Chair Bill Dodd, would extend renewals from 12 months to two renewals or 24 months, whichever is greater in the event of a disaster. And Senate Bill 917, introduced by Senator Hannah Beth Jackson, provides that landslides and mudslides are covered even if specifically excluded. Don't you love that? If landslides were proximately, proximately caused by another peril, such as a mudslide. Now, any of these bills that get enacted might cause the admitted market to react in a way uh, as to make decisions about its exposure, and that could be of very key interest to everybody in this room. Now, starting in 2015, we began discussing the wildfire issue with legislative staff in Sacramento who were concerned about the spike of homeowners' policies going into the surplus lines market. We provided some education about how this was not something to be concerned about and that the surplus line market was simply providing coverage in areas where admitted insurers were reconsidering their exposure. Ultimately, no legislation adverse to our industry emerged, which was a very good result. Uh, one thing that you find uh, in legislation is that oftentimes it's far better for a bill not to be passed than for a bill to be passed. So let's shift now from legislation to some political matters that are relevant to us. In recent months, um, an increased focus on sexual harassment and misconduct has taken a toll on the worlds of business, entertainment, and politics, and California has been no exception. The fallout from the increased attention to matters of sexual harassment and misconduct have taken a toll on the legislature. For instance, we currently do not have a chair of the Senate Insurance Committee. State Senator Tony Mendoza was stripped of his committee posts in late 2017 pending an investigation into sexual misconduct allegations against him, which he is flatly denying. And uh, we understand from some of our sources in Sacramento that we might have a new insurance committee chair sometime around March. Also, uh, three resignations by Democrats in the state assembly have at least temporarily deprived the Democratic Party of its two-thirds supermajority, which is required by state law to pass taxes or other emergency legislation. Um, at least two of the three resignations were due to sexual misconduct allegations, and the Democrats now have 52 of the 80 seats in the state assembly. You need 54 to have that two-thirds supermajority. There will be special elections to fill those seats. They likely will go back to the Democrats, but as for now, they don't have the two-thirds supermajority they would need to pass a tax increase. On the state Senate side, Democrats do continue to have a two-thirds supermajority, uh, but they would lose it if any Democratic senator lost his or her seat to a Republican. Um, senator Josh Newman of Fullerton will face a recall election on June 5th, and if he loses the Democrats' supermajority in the state Senate, will also be broken. On the federal level in Washington, we know there will be a new House Financial Services Committee chair in 2019. The current chair, Congressman Jeb Hensterling of Texas, is not running again. He's one of about 40 uh, members of Congress who have decided not to run again this year. Uh, if Republicans do maintain control of the U.S. House after the 2018 election, another Republican will become chair. Um, California Republican Ed Royce may have been in a position to become chair, uh, but he is one of those uh, legislators who has announced that he is not going to run again in 2018. If Democrats win the House, the aforementioned uh, Maxine Waters is the Democratic ranking member on that committee, and she would be very likely to become the chair of that committee that is very relevant to insurance issues. Now that we've gone over what's currently happening in legislation and politics, I'd like to talk to you about where we come in and where you come in. A common theme in all of the legislative updates I've just provided has been the need to proactively influence our elected leaders and the people who work for them. But there's only so much that your SLA staff can do by itself. We need your help. The most effective advocacy organizations are those in which members are active in meeting and building relationships with their elected leaders. That way, when we're trying to help push through beneficial legislation or maybe pull back a little bit on some of the legislation that would not be so beneficial, we can reach out to our members and ask you 
to get in touch with your members who represent you uh, through phone calls, through letters, through personal relationships if you have them. Here's the truth. Elected leaders are not always especially interested in what a company, a trade association has to say if we're not in their district. I used to work for a congressman. I can tell you from experience there is really one key thing that every elected official is interested in, getting reelected. That's the bottom line. They're interested in the people who can hire them or who can fire them. I live in San Ramon. A congressman from LA doesn't really care so much what I think unless I'm giving him or her a lot of money because I can't vote to hire or fire them. So we want to reach out to you, to our members, find out whose districts you're in and how you might be able to help get us in the door with some of these people who may not care what a guy in San Ramon has to say, but might care very much what somebody in Fullerton or Orange or LA has to say. And so, we have created the SLA Grassroots Program. And as I close today, I would like to ask, to urge all of you to join and to consider having your colleagues and your employees sign up as well. Signing up is simple. You just go to our grassroots webpage, which you see on the screen, sla.com slash resources slash grassroots. Once you're there, click the link and sign up and give us your contact information. Now, one thing that is absolutely crucial, we have to have your home address, not your business address. We won't share it with anybody. We'll keep it to ourselves. But we need to know whose districts you live in and whose districts you vote in, because that, as I mentioned, is crucial. In addition to looking for advocates in all of our legislative and congressional districts, we are also looking for people who want to become more deeply involved in our advocacy efforts and help shape those efforts. Under the leadership of Hank Haldeman, the SLA Legislative Committee is planning to expand from its current 11-person membership to at least 15 members, and we hope to add members from key districts of legislators who are heavily involved in insurance issues, perhaps on the relevant committees. If you would like to get more involved, I'd love to have you. Please feel free to contact me at cbrown at slacal.org. As I close today, finally, I just want to issue a reminder. We have a number of very important elections taking place this year. In California, we are going to be electing a new governor, a new lieutenant governor, possibly a new attorney general, and a new insurance commissioner. In addition, Every member of the state assembly is on the ballot, and 20 out of 40 state senators will be up for election this year. On the national level, all 435 members of the U.S. House of Representatives will be up for election, including 53 right here in California. One out of every eight members of the U.S. House will be facing election in the state of California this year. And 34 out of 100 U.S. senators are on the ballot, including Senator Dianne Feinstein. It is absolutely vital to your interests as business people and citizens to take part and do your civic duty. Please get out and vote. Speaking of voting, I would now like to turn it back over to Tom Cardello as we have an election of our own to conduct right now. Thank you very much.